because this week we're going to see another example of Mother Nature getting back a little of what she's given to us. Yeah, Shelbyville cubes are the hope for better fisheries in Shelbyville. Steve Nichols shows us through the lens how Habitat is getting a facelift in an aging lake. Lake Shelbyville is getting a helping hand. from a very dedicated group of volunteers. The lake was built in the early 70s. When they did build it, the coves were full of trees. There were stumps in the main channel on the main lake. There were huge brush piles. Most of that's decayed. And so what we're dealing with now is what we call the aging effect of a reservoir. You lost a habitat for the fish and a declining quality of the fishery. The recent flooding in the lake has helped the fish population. The flooding actually creates a lot of habitat as it inundates the trees that are still standing. And it creates a lot of food for the, the crayfish, like the gizzard shad and, and the sun, small sunfish. And then that allows the other fish, the predators, to grow faster because they have all this extra food. What would happen if we don't have that flooded timber habitat? Or worse, what if there's a low water in the spring and even more habitat is lost? Enter the Georgia Cube. Well, Mike Mounts came to my office and we just were discussing the lake and the lack of habitat on it. And then he kind of told me about uh, Georgia Cube that he was interested in putting in the lake, but he wanted to redesign it. So what we did is took the Georgia Cube, raised it up off the bottom, with the idea of trying to make it more attractive to bass, walleye, maybe muskie, maybe catfish. So we raised it up off the ground and then I built a prototype and then it just kind of took off from there. Oh, no, it launched from there. Corps of Engineers, IDNR, guides, we're all working together. Well, we have a great group of volunteers, um, basically Chip Christensen here at Chip's Marine organized all that. He's in touch with a lot of these fishermen out here, he's got good rapport with all of them, and basically through him and, and word of mouth, we're now we're getting a, a good group of volunteers out here. And Everybody has a job here, and they're all working together like a well-oiled machine. We're going to build 50 today. We're getting the process down, and we're doing it um, kind of like a factory work, you know, where everybody has their job. And pass it on to the next guy and we're getting it down to where we're getting them done really quickly and, and real good real good craftsmanship. Now, this is the first rodeo for a lot of these guys. We've been here before. And uh, pretty much 2017 we built 162. Okay. And then we're okay. we're planning on building another 250 this year. And apparently it's been a worthy investment. Two days after these structures are put in the water, they're already attracting fish. Not only are they easy to find on your electronics, they're fun. You know, you can come around here and you can work way, work your way up and see which one they're holding fish more that day. And they're just fantastic, easy fishing that are proven and effective ways to hold fish. And there just may be an added benefit to these structures. Fish attractors that we've been building, they truly help hold fish and then they're easier to fish for. And you actually get hung up less and in return that makes a cleaner lake for everything from the fishermen, the boatermen, the recreational boaters, and even the fish themselves. Now the long-term benefits of these structures is yet to be determined. The Natural History Survey will study them and see what kind of plastic effects they will have. Do they do more than attract fish? Do they actually increase fish biomass in the lake you put them in by uh, creating this bottom-up up effect? These structures grow algae, um, bugs and macroinvertebrates, they use that algae for food and then fish will then eat those uh, animals and does that lead to more fish biomass in the lake and a better fishery in the end. And the initial results seem to indicate a positive impact. Well, we know they attract fish, so um, I think they're going to continue to attract fish and at different times of the year with fish moving on and off structure, fishermen are going to see success fishing on these structures. And from personal experience, I can tell you that the They'll crappie seem to like them a lot. Big old Through crap. my lens there in Shelbyville, is. this is Steve Nichols, <laughs> WAND. You did not want to come in. Some of my best days come when it's snowing.